Hi, Imp Honors Program. I'm Riley. I'm Juliana. I'm Madeline. And I'm Taylor. And we are all super mentors for the Amp Honors Program, as you may know. Um, we are here today for a Mountains Beyond Mountains book review for the, um, or in part for the National HIV Testing Day on June 27th, which is a Saturday. This will be going up on a Friday, though. Um, so what this book is, it's written by Tracy Kidder. So it's a, it's a nonfiction, it's a biography kind of thing about Dr. Paul Farmer. And Dr. Paul Farmer is a physician and an anthropologist and a philanthropist and all those fun words. Um, but he's just a really inspirational um, doctor and he works primarily um, in third world countries such as Haiti, Peru and Russia. Um, and particularly with, um, or he focuses his work on tuberculosis but um, being in third world countries, he also sees a lot and a lot of HIV. Um, so that's touched on plenty throughout the book. Um, and so a little more on Paul Farmer. He, is, he has his MD and PhD from Harvard, um, which so does Dr. Atul Gawande that, we, that Maddie and I have talked about um, at length before. And then... Um, He's the co-founder and chief strategist of Partners in Health, which is a, an international nonprofit um, organization that provides healthcare and other services to people who live in poverty. Um, he has a, a lot of expertise in, on AIDS and tuberculosis. Um, and he's also a consultant to anti-tuberculosis programs in Peru and Russia. Um, so with that, I'm not going to do a whole lot more talking, a whole lot, whole lot much more talking. I'm sorry. It's um, straining my voice. I'm getting over, getting over some sickness. So I'm just going to pass it off to these three um, and just kind of some of their main takeaways. I think Maddie was going to start, start us off. Definitely. So um, I know I've said this about a lot of books, but honestly, when I say this, like Mountains Beyond, Mountains Beyond Mountains is one of my favorite books. And it really changed the way I, changed the way I look at the world um, and global health in, in total. And this is because this book really provided a public health perspective. Um, it's not just, you know, the medical and the sciencey part of things, but it really hit hard on public health. And that is something that I really didn't have much exposure to before prior to taking, I read this book for a class and it just talks a lot about, you know, conditions um, in developing countries and um, especially outside of the U.S. and the global health perspective and the importance of clean water, sewage systems, transportation, um, healthcare facilities, uh, enough supply of like local physicians and providers, uh, you name it, vaccinations, education, um, public health education, all that stuff. And how all of those pieces are so important in the puzzle of, you know, health promotion and good health overall. So um, that is my first main takeaway of this book. And second of all, um, this book really made me realize um, and kind of like stirred the pot of ambi ambivalence in me. And what ambivalence is, is the often unacknowledged uneasiness that some of the fortunate feel about their place in the world. So this really just um, made me have some like, you know, made me think twice about how privileged I am to live in the country that I do and to have the resources that I do um, at, with the ease that I do. Um, and one quote that I really do like from the book is um, it's on page eight in this version. And it just says, the world is full of miserable places. One way of living comfortably is to not think about them or when you do to send money. And, you know, obviously donating and um, all that is all well and good, but like to actually have a bigger impact is something that Paul Farmer has done. And um, it's just very inspiring to hear more about his story. So with that, I'll pass it on to Taylor to hear more about her main takeaways. Yeah, definitely. Um, Paul Farm reading, I also read this book for a class last year, uh, Microbiology. And um, just reading it, uh, Paul Farmer was definitely a very selfless person. And you just almost don't think like people like that exist, like how much he cared about Haiti and his patients. And um, towards the end of the book, he talked about uh, triage and said that there's two forms of triage with the first being in a place with like limited supplies, 
they tend to people um, with the best chance of surviving first and some people may die without being taken care of. And then there's a place with plenty of supplies, everyone re receives care with um, priority given to the people in the most danger. And he talks about he prefers the second, obviously, but um, in, ha in a place like Haiti, he is stuck with the first option. And um, he just says that I do it every day, do this instead of that every day, all day long. That's all I do is not do things. And that's kind of ironic to me when I read it because he's done so much for so many people. And just to point out that he always has to choose if he does one thing that he can't do another. And that just really stuck out to me as a, the type of person that he is. Definitely. I agree with that. I think it speaks to his dedication and his re he's like relentless and what he does for other people. And um, that's so inspiring just to, you know, have the drive and the will to just continue to give, give and give. And sometimes to a fault in his regard, because I remember one time in the book, like he did end up getting pretty sick and um, that didn't do him so well. But um, I'll actually quote, I mean, I think it's one of all of our favorite quotes, but Riley wanted me to mention this quote. It's on page 294. And I think this um, is a really good quote that kind of sums up the message of the entire book. Um, so it goes like this. He's still going to make these hikes, he'd insist, because if you say that seven hours is too long to walk for two families of patients, you're saying that their lives matter less than some others. And the idea that some lives matter less is the root of all that's wrong with the world. So um, with that being said, I will let Juliana yes, wrap up our conversation here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to beat that uh, quote, but that kind of wraps up all in all his mission and what he kind of discussed throughout the book. Um, Paul Farmer's mission was to change the way the world and its health experts think about and treat the communicable and the infectious diseases that are so widely spread throughout our world and to bring that global awareness to anyone and everyone. And I think that's something that like Madeline had touched on in the United States, you don't really think about, you know, healthcare as a, you know, there's all these things wrong with it, or you don't have a lot of access to it. Um, but Paul Farmer throughout this book talks a lot about that. I should say Tracy talks a lot about that, not Paul Farmer, but um, so with that being said, Paul Farmer also mentioned the point of the right to health. So in his terms, he believes that it is a ba basic human right to health and to have that access, um, which was, it is still his mission and his goal is to provide that to anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, we do highly recommend this book for you guys to read to kind of expand your knowledge and awareness to global health issues and just about Paul Farmer in general, because he is, one of a kind. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we encourage you to read this book. And if you do, let us know your thoughts. So,